ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new episode of Nerd Meltdown. My name is Jack, and joining me as always, my co-host, we got Jesse Tiv. How you doing? Doing great. How we doing? Doing fantastic. And of course, we got your boy Andrew rounding up the co-host. How you doing, Andrew? What's up, everyone? Yes. All right, so episode two, quite a bit to talk about. I think the first place to start, kind of a nice follow-up if you watched episode one, where we talked about gambling yet again, but as opposed to illegal gambling, this is, of course, about legalized gambling. If you didn't hear, I believe it was the U.S. Senate moved to finally lift the federal prohibition on gambling, the sports gambling, and now it's going to be up to individual states to decide whether they allow legalized sports gambling in their area. And already it looks like within the next five years, something like 20 or 30 states are going to be opening up legalized sports betting. And I think the biggest thing to take away from this is the effect on esports, which is what I'm personally more interested in than traditional sports. And to kind of contrast the illegality and the issues that last week's gambling issues have caused... A legal sports gambling business involved in gaming could lead to a, just a huge amount of money, and a lot of interesting developments could come out of that. What are you guys' initial thoughts around that whole situation? Well, the injection of revenue into the scene would be ridiculous. I mean, we're talking about millions and millions of dollars, possibly billions of dollars, because there's already illegal gambling sites where you can bet on game on games outcomes. All over the place and there are legal ones outside of the states but you're missing out on a big part of the audience that is in the states so to have that kind of injection and money to go into the scene i don't know um how anything could, bad could come out of it because if it's all legit and above board more money to the scene means more money for the pros means better events means more money in the prize pools and that's all great yeah i mean 100 percent. that's uh the the whole thing is is that gambling is Heavily regulated, it had. There's a lot of people watching every single red cent that is bet on the sports books in places like Vegas. So if there's any bullshit going on, any match fixing or anything that's you know not straight and narrow, I mean we're talking instead of you know where we saw match fixers and Counter Strike just being banned from playing for life, we're talking a federal offense in the United States. We're talking jail time yeah, and a jail. lot of money that's going to be charged against you. So, Isn't that like a good thing though? Because that's hundred percent a good thing. Heck yeah! It'll get a you'll think twice before trying to cheat. Yeah, well that that's the best thing about it is that now yeah. one all these illegal gambling sites can no longer operate. They're yeah. not going to be able to. They're going to be pushed out by the legal gambling scene, which is going to offer a better product that isn't so shady and you know like so many issues with like consumer, uh, like consumer benefits, right? But, uh, I mean, there's no way people don't, it's very rare to see people abuse legal gambling or, like, point shave or commit crimes in that way. It's, it's, it's also regulated. Very, it's very rare to see people get caught. You know yeah. it happens. Oh, it, it for sure happens. And there's also still a lot of illegal gambling alongside that. Oh, but, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, with the, with the Boston College stuff that happened, I think maybe it was, like, 30 years ago now with the, the mafia was was fixing Boston, Boston Boston College games, and that's what shut down the mafias because they got caught fixing Boston College games. They all went to jail. They took down the head guy. And, like, after that kind of stuff, it's like, well, you know, is there really that much fixing going on? Because you're going to jail, like, for a long time. Like, this is not just, like, slap on the wrist shit, you know? Yeah, yeah no, this is a felony straight up. We're talking, like, 20 years, depending it's on, like, how much money you cost. Yeah, it'll totally gonna. It's totally gonna change the scene completely. I mean, just on the impact of that alone. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it. The thing is, is that one, there's gonna be a lot more opportunity for sponsorship, which I think is the biggest thing right now. A lot of esports organizations really do struggle with stable sponsorships, especially like you look at a game like Counter Strike, which you know, let's be real, isn't exactly the most advertiser friendly game when it's about shooting and killing terrorists and blowing yeah. up shit with bombs. It doesn't, it doesn't appeal to a Nike, right? That ain't going to happen. No. But you look at, like, gambling organizations pick up this shit, like, left and right, and all the illegal ones did. And when those fell apart, teams lost a lot of money and a lot of, like, you know, stability. So I think this is going to be a great thing to just stabilize the backbone of esports. And if anything, it's going to solidify itself as an actual, like, mainstream thing now. If you see even already places like Vegas have books dedicated to esports, I just oh, you yeah, know, yeah. I don't see there being really any drawbacks to this. 
Yeah, there's, I agree one hundred percent. There's not. I mean, there's 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 no real drawback to it. it it's 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 really. I mean, it, it has. It, this this gives the opportunity not only to solidify it, but I mean to really give it a chance to flourish. Yeah, well, and then you you take a look at like uh, other countries around the world. I mean, they have sports gambling all over Europe, and there there aren't mass issues of corruption or like you know gambling addiction isn't like it is like gambling has like such a weird toxic connotation in American culture specifically, which is it's kind of weird when you look at. Uh, one of my personal favorite like esports uh, commentators, a guy named Thorin, he, him and Richard Lewis on their Counter Strike podcast were talking about this, and a really good point they made was about how weird it was how gambling in general was treated in America compared to like Britain and other places around the world. It definitely is one of those things. Like you look at like soccer, and there's tons, there's billions of dollars in legal gambling going into soccer every year, and oh, it just yeah. makes professional soccer more and more lucrative. But yeah, it's I mean, kind of weird that, how we've looked at gambling for like the last 50 years in America. Everyone in the town I live in is all about soccer and they bet all day long. And there's all yeah. kinds of sites yeah. dedicated to it for local people that I know of. Yeah. I think definitely there's no reason why states can't decide how to regulate their own gambling. It was always kind of weird that the federal government kind of stepped over states' rights in that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's nothing really else to add there. That's a really cool thing to see and we'll see what benefits or uh any potential downsides it could bring to esports in the in the coming years but it is something to make note of moving on let I me let me, biggest... let me hop in right here because we're on esports right. and we might as well talk about one of the topics that i want to talk about here <clears throat> basically so i coach baseball okay mm-hmm. that's one of the things i like to do with my time and uh seeing something that happened in uh team liquid at msi which is an international competition a really big competition one of their players pulled themselves out of a match and replaced him with their backup person to go in there so are you this talking guy's uh, league of legends league of legends this is okay. team liquid ole pulled himself out of a match and one of the biggest tournaments in the year there's only two worlds tournaments throughout the year msi and worlds he pulled right. himself out of the game coaching in esports is a big like question mark right now there's uh-huh. hardly any good coaches around so how do you feel about a player pulling himself out of the match when there's only a certain amount of matches and we're playing with a lesser player as his backup well i mean my first question would be why did he explain why he pulled himself out oh he had a confidence issue didn't think he was having confidence issues okay okay so (laughs) the the whole coaching thing is such a weird gray area because you look at like counter-strike Valve, you know, says now that, like, coaches can't be super involved in, like, the play-to-play during Counter-Strike league, tournaments league's now. League's different. Yeah, I'm not sure what the coaching rules are in League, but, um, yeah, I mean, these, at the end of the day, all these people are athletes, and athletes need coaches and leaders and people who can, you know, motivate and help them along, and not having, like, solid coaching can definitely be, like, a massive like burden on a team i don't you know it makes sense to have really strong dedicated coaches well let me put it this way if a kid came up to me on the baseball team let's say our shortstop is having confidence issues right and he comes up to me and says i don't want to play today i'm going to shove him back out there and go listen you play when i tell you to play okay i will pull you out if i feel like you're a detriment to the team so how does a coach let somebody just take themselves out of the game and basically guarantee them a loss because they're going to play with a guy who's never played in LCS. He's never been a pro. He's just freshly new to the scene, and he comes out, and they get wrecked. And it's like, how are you as a coach just going to let him pull himself out of the lineup? And nobody's talking about this. Everybody's talking about how Ole is having confidence issues, and he's pulled himself out of the game. And the whole focus is on Ole and not on the coach. I think it should be on the coach. Like, how do you let him pull himself out of the game and cost yourself a guaranteed loss? Yeah, I mean, co- that's that that is that is the basis of what a coach is. I mean, you, you you need to be able to at that point sit that guy down and be like, you know what, you need to like get your shit together. We're gonna handle this. This is how it's gonna happen. You're gonna kick ass, take names, and we're gonna go party about it later. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. But nobody's that, talking about this right now. That, Everybody that, is talking about how Ole needs help. And this and that, because he's like a he's a big guy in the community, and I like him a lot. But when you pull yourself out of a game and cost your team, you only see worlds. You only see the world stays twice a year. So if you pull yourself out of a game there, like what yeah. are you doing? That's the only reason to play is to play international tournaments. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that says two things to me right away. It says, one, he doesn't respect his coach at all. No, There's no respect for whoever that coach is whatsoever within that team dynamic, clearly. Because no one, like, if I was playing football and I wanted to walk off the field, that would mean I didn't give a shit about, one, my other teammates, and two, my coaches. Cause, you know, and you probably wouldn't play again. It's, yeah, no, 100%. If I tried to do that, my coaches would fucking kick me off the team. Especially on a stage of, like, that magnitude. And for that oh, much yeah. money. We're talking yeah. 50k viewers. Yeah. You know, like this is like live streaming 50k, 80k viewers. Like it's a big tournament. Yeah. I'm, has have his teammates come out and like called him out on it? Because I no, would be fucking I mean, pissed. One of his teammates is Double Lift. Like they, okay. they lean together. Double Lift's like a big name in the scene and yeah. he is a very strong personality. So there's a lot of rumors flying around that Double Lift is putting too much pressure on him and this, this, and that. But that excuse is not good enough to me. That's not a good enough excuse at all. Wow. I mean, you're playing yeah. at the world stage. You're playing in some of the best teams in League of Legends, period. Yeah, these are the deal... best teams. These are the best teams from the best regions. Yeah, you, you have to be able to deal with that pressure. And frankly, if you're not confident enough to be there, you shouldn't be there in the first place. Like, you yeah, know, you've been given this opportunity. Game. Yeah. That, yeah. That's you know, just mind before the tournament. Like, not, not puss out midway through. That's fucking bullshit. That's ridiculous. Yeah, fuck. yeah. I just wanted to put a quick spotlight on it because nobody seems to be talking about it right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, that coach should definitely be held accountable. He should totally be held accountable for that. Absolutely. I think, it, I think the big thing is, is that we don't look at team dynamics in esports the same as we do traditional sports. We put yeah. a lot more emphasis on the individual player because esports is like such a different thing compared to something like football or basketball, which is much more about like the unit and the team. I mean, you see it happen all the time. Uh, you almost see like the opposite happen in Counter Strike, where often problems that are connected with individual players are blamed on like the leader, the in-game leader, or the coach more excessively than like the individual parts. So it's kind of weird how we look at team dynamics as a whole in that space. Huh. What else we got, Jack? Uh, so I guess I think the biggest story to come out of these last few weeks has got to be uh, Black Ops Four being announced. This happened a couple days ago. And, um, I mean, fuck, dude, this was a pretty big deal. I mean, Call of Duty, it's it's not been doing well for the last it's few years. It's in the tank right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. it's definitely trending downwards since Black Ops 3, without a doubt. And yeah. Treyarch, I think, definitely has the most good faith out of all of those developers. So people yeah. expect a lot. And I think that you know, going to kind of somewhere between Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3 in terms of, like, timeline and technology... Is a really dope concept. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Battle Royale, because obviously this is like the first big AAA developer to take on Battle Royale. It was a, it was a pretty exciting thing to watch unfold, for sure. Did you I get mean, a chance to watch the reveal, Andrew? I, I did, I did. Um, what did you I think? actually did my reaction video right before we finished oh, this. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. The plug. And, <laughs> yeah, I'll be at, um, uh, I'll, it will be up tomorrow. Check it out. Um, but, uh, no, yeah, I this game right when I saw it, I was like, okay, Black Ops Four, this is gonna be cool. Like, I, I was, I was hoping it was gonna be good. I, I wasn't, I didn't love World War Two. I mean, I didn't love the last couple games that have come out. I mean, I, I, I love like OG Black Ops, uh, Modern Warfare Two, yeah. like those are some of my favorite. But this one, when I saw the trailer, I was, oh my god, it was beautiful. I, I was there were so many spots where I was like, holy crap, I want this game now. Let where the hell is it now? I want it now. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, same. I think uh um we are actually not the majority right now. I think the community's like, well, we might be on the fifty fifty line here. Oh my um, god. I lo- I love it. I want to play it. I love Black Ops three. It's Black Ops three with no movement, which is oh fine. My- that sounds great to me. But the community does seem to be split on a lot of the mechanics. Now they did try to go in an Overwatch direction. They did. Um, the, they had the a meeting gun. with that one talking about some of the things they can do to make it like Overwatch. And they started with the healing, and there were other drastic things that were closer to Overwatch, but they have scaled them back. And the community is still bummed that the healing made it into the game. What are your yeah. thoughts on the well, healing? Okay, game? so like, okay. first off, you guys are complaining that like all these people are complaining that COD's boring and COD doesn't do anything new. 
Like right. Call of Duty tries to do something new, and suddenly <laughs> you're bitching. It's not the same. It's like right. You get we got World War Two, which was boots on the ground. We went way the fuck back from future versus games. Then you guys yeah. complained that there wasn't enough to do, and it wasn't interesting. And it's like I, I, that whole like back and forth shit that the COD community has been doing for years really annoys right. the hell out of me. Oh my because god, because Treyarch, We're dumb. It's so fucking dumb because Treyarch has always been the developer that's like. Pushing the to push the limits. They've tried yeah. to make Call of Duty different every single time. Oh, yeah. And like, I think the healing mechanic. Okay, everybody is saying that the healing mechanic is going to slow down the game. I oh, think the healing yeah. mechanic is going to speed up the game because let's say you go into a room, you kill four people. It's COD. You always go into a room, kill four people. You are low. Works. There's people outside the room. Instead of having to sit in the room and heal up, wait for the regen, you can immediately stick the stim pack in your arm, push out, kill everybody else. Put the yeah. stim pack in your arm again. There's like no cooldown on the stim pack. Like you are going to be able to heal yourself immediately after your fight. Yeah. And there, that does not slow down gameplay. It speeds up gameplay. That is awesome. Well, what then the not hell? to mention, like, you know, I think the concept of specialists just adds more variety. I don't have a problem with specialists. I think they were nobody well complained about Ops specialists 3. in Black Ops Three. Nobody yeah. complained about. It. And it's kind of cool that like the the uh, the style they're going for is like what develops into Black Ops 3. So you can see, like, gravity spikes in, like, its first iteration before they refine the technology. You see, like, the fucking, uh, the giant-ass revolver in its yeah. unrefined original state. I love that whole aesthetic. The aesthetic to this game is fucking dope already. And, yeah, like... That, it looks beautiful. It looks great. And then, oh, like, it looks so good. The domination game mode they showcased here in some of the multiplayer that they allowed, like, the big YouTubers to play at the event... That yeah. whole that whole ticket system is straight out of bat Battlefield, and I love that style where you yeah, count the points to drain resources. I think that game mode works so well. Yeah, it and is, then the other thing is so uh, <laughs> the other thing is uh, they have made the specialist to where you can only have one specialist per that team. Like, so let's say you want to be the revolver lady seraph or whatever you can't have two seraphs on the same team it's more like overwatch where you have to pick a specialist that nobody else has picked uh, right. okay so that's another thing people are complaining about it like let's say i only play a seraph and it's like okay there's already a seraph on the team i can't pick seraph well you fucking learn to play other characters dog i don't know what to tell you yeah same i agree i'm just i'm just playing devil's advocate yeah. here oh yeah, yeah. Ver ver versatility is key I mean, yeah, and then the other thing is they shit can the campaign. I'd much rather have them shit can the campaign for a battle royale. Hell yeah! See, I I think on this one I'm a little torn because uh, regardless of how the multiplayer have turned out, I think Call of Duty's always put out, if nothing else, an interesting campaign. I think they have a lot of very talented people in their story departments, especially Treyarch Call of Duties have always had really good campaigns. So, like, yeah. I'm a little bit bummed, but also, like, the things they talk about with the Battle Royale, um, it's it's going to be interesting. I don't know how I feel. I don't know if the game should still be, like, a full AAA release. I don't know if, like, you should still charge $60 for what is a multiplayer-only game, what is essentially a game with, like, a time limit for how long you're going to be able to play it. Because yeah, at least with the other Call true. of Duties, you can always play that single player. That's always, like, an option. You know, that is true. I mean, me personally, I'm I'm a big story story game kind of person. I always do the story mode on like every COD, every every FPS game I get, every story game. I mean, I love like Assassin's Creed. I love like big long story modes, and I think it's it's it is going to take about take away that replayability. I, I'm just completely like. But drained. would you so rather it have like forty bucks and not would, sixty? <laughs> Would you rather have the campaign or the battle royale? That's I mean, a tough one. It a tough one. I don't like, I don't love battle royale, but I think battle royale with the COD influence might be pretty cool. I, I think it would be fun, but I, but is it really worth the same amount of money though? Is what I'm saying. The the replayability is why I would pay sixty bucks for a game. But if there's no replayability, I mean, how long is this COD going to last? A year before the next one's out? Most likely, yeah. So I mean, yeah. am I going to pay sixty bucks for to play online for a year and then never touch it again, or would I like to have a, a campaign that I can play in three years and still like it? Yeah, that's an interesting point. Well, then not to mention, I mean, at the end of the day, I get that they're making the battle royale like such a big feature, but when you boil it down, it's just another game mode. It's just a yeah. multiplayer game mode, right? Well, so I mean, I mean, that's a huge game mode. True, it, it, but yeah, it'd be a little it, bigger. It's, yeah, it's definitely on a bigger scale than something like Domination or Kill Confirmed, but 
But but how many players will be the Battle Royale? Like, I think, like, a game like Titanfall, the original one's biggest mistake was trying to push to market with DLC and Season Pass oh, yeah. at full price for a multiplayer-only experience. And I waited until that year discounted. Timefall yeah. 2? No, Timefall 1. Timefall Time 1. 1. I'm just yeah, using Timefall like 2 example. has an awesome campaign. Timefall 2 has an amazing campaign. But, like, Timefall 1, that, kinda, that was one of those things that didn't really sit well with a lot of people because you asked full price when there were other full price games that had more content and then on top of that you also charge for DLC and COD is notorious for like season passes and DLC and now microtransactions it's like how much money are they going to charge for a multiplayer only game you know yeah like, i got to wonder if the $60 price tag is still justified for what now there offering. are missions that okay. should be worth saying there are missions for each specialist has like two or three missions of lore oh. backstory okay so each one has a couple yeah Kind of like mini chopped up stories. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember yep. you telling me about that. Okay. Mm. I mean, I mean that that gives a still little not bit a campaign. More, it's though. Still not a campaign. I still think college should move away from the season pass model in general. I think the season pass model has really played itself out. They You'll get more microtransactions though. I mean, all as long as they stick to cosmetic based microtransactions like they have with the with well, not Infinite Warfare per se, but um, World War Two did it really well. Black Ops Three. Did it well until they put weapons in the supply boxes, but you could do just micro DLC, or at least like I think their season passes in general are just like too expensive. They're usually like thirty dollars. It's like that's a lot for not a whole lot of DLC content usually. Before yeah. we get off of DLC, I gotta mention something. Do you have have you ever got a game and played it, and you 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 ended up buying the individual little DLCs here and there, and then they release it like six months later as the gold edition or something? Oh, the complete all edition. That shit you just paid yeah. for, and you just paid like two hundred something dollars for all this crap, and they just get it for like fifty five dollars. Well, what the hell just happened? Oh, I just got ripped off. I hate you, PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, DLC. I mean, like, it's like you got to think about the time, though. Like at that time, the game population might be low enough to where <clears throat> the DLC is only worth X amount of dollars. Yeah. So it would go down. I mean, obviously, the the value would would dissipate over time. So it's like, do you pay for it now and enjoy it right now with everybody else, or do you oh, wait yeah. until it's cheaper? I'm I'm Always too damn tough. impatient to wait for crap. <laughs> Same. 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 Why Destiny sucked all the money I will ever have out of me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Destiny Two is hey, fast sold. Back in the Fun. day, back in the day, Diablo Two did that shit to me. Yeah, I, the MOs are notorious with that shit. Oh <laughs> my god! Like I was like working, and I was like, why don't I ever have money? I was like, oh, but my my D two character's got every goddamn thing with all kinds of guns <laughs> in it and shit. I'm like, my guy glows like purple. Hell yeah, that's all I want. I'm good. Hell yeah, dude. Fucking purple. <laughs> God damn. It was totally worth the five bucks. Hell yeah. No, it was like more like 45, but. Oh, fuck off. No. I used to buy swords, <laughs> like rune swords back in the day for like 40 bucks. I was Shit. like stupid. <laughs> yeah, not about it. I think, uh, I think my big thing would be to, it just, I guess, ultimately it depends on how much content they ship at launch. Because I think that if you're not going to dedicate the resources to a full campaign, then you should be delivering like the most multiplayer content a Call of Duty's ever seen at launch. I think that should be the standard people should be setting for this game if they're free not going to dedicate those resources. Free DLC. I mean, free DLC notwithstanding, I think that the game at launch should have more content than we are used to with Call of Duty games. <clears throat> like, that it's very unlikely that you'll get free DLC unless the microtransactions are selling like out the ass. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because like DLC is guaranteed money. Microtransactions is possibilities of making money. Right. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I do think the the other thing of note for me is that I don't think I would be very excited about this game if it wasn't for the Activision Blizzard partnership. Because the, if there's one thing Call of Duty has not done at all well for like the last five years is uh, catering to the PC crowd. I'm exclusively a PC gamer, right? <laughs> so, until this point, Call of Duty has not been of interest to me at all because it's usually like a crappy port by a third-party developer that's like seven people just doing it because Activision asked them to. And, <laughs> like, it doesn't run, it's buggy as hell, it's just, it, you know, it's just always terrible. But because of the Activision Blizzard partnership, that means that there are Blizzard developers who are going to be developing this game exclusively for PC, its own independent mm -hmm. PC version. 
they get Jack all excited. He's excited right now. <laughs> okay, so like this is something I've been saying for a long time is that there aren't any games like on Steam or on Origin that do the Call of Duty style that aren't yeah. like non indie games. There's no AAA developer making a COD style shooter for PC. So I think it's a and very good market. It's really fun. Like the Super fact fun. that like I know a lot of people like complain about COD and say like it's all oh, it's a baby's game, this and that, but it is so much fun to turn your brain off and just run around and kill thirty people a game. Like that's a lot of fun to do. Dude, yeah, you know why, what? You yeah. know what part I freaked out for in that damn trailer? What? When when he released the tomahawk, I missed the damn <laughs> tomahawk. <laughs> Gotta get them cross maps, dog. Dude, that's yeah, what dude, I was doing. Like hot, I dude. back in the day, I used to just roll around with the hawk all the time. Screw guns! I was just rolling around, hawking people left and right, and then I would like grenade toss my my tomahawk, like arch that shit, and I just crack oh, someone yeah. right in the face. It was I so mean, dope. You look at like the older Call of Duties. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. MW2 still has like 3,000 people who play it every day on Steam. Yeah. So people like Call of Duty on PC. They just fucked off around the time of like Black Ops 2 for the PC community. And after that, they just haven't catered to them at all. So, yeah. I mean, as much as I really don't like Overwatch as a game in terms of its gameplay, it is a technically like seamless game. It runs perfectly. It has good netcode. It's developed very well for the PC platform. So if it's those guys working on an independent PC version of Call of Duty, I'm definitely there. I'm cautiously interested to see what happens during like the beta phases. So Hell yeah. I mean, if they do a good version of Call of Duty for PC, I don't see how that doesn't sell well. I think it's a totally open market. And to put it on Battle.net, which Destiny has already proven that that's a legitimate thing to do. Oh, oh yeah. I think, I think that's great. I think I'm really excited. I'm definitely going to get it on both platforms. <laughs> Speaking of Destiny 2, kind of transitioning a little bit, now that we've kind of had a little bit more time past our initial review to steal on it, obviously Destiny 2, two weeks in now, has had their next, their second DLC out called Warmind. And, wow. Um, I mean, it's kind of been interesting to see different people in the community kind of not react the same way that, like, me and Jesse have. Because I think for me and Jess... And some of the other people I've been playing with, it's been a very positive experience these last few weeks of Destiny. But uh, it still seems like there's this really negative sentiment in the community towards a lot of these changes. I'm not really sure well, what to take of that. It's because it's because here at Nerds Marais, we're we're a lot more open. Everyone else sucks. <laughs> there you go, hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. It's I will tell you one haters. thing. I do find it very surprising that some of the big names in the community are not coming out in support of the DLC and are actually finding very minor flaws to complain about <clears throat> this dlc is probably one of the better dlcs in destiny history and if you like destiny at all you should come back and play this dlc yet i'm hearing every big youtuber saying if you like dlc if you like destiny don't come back for this dlc because it's not worth it wow yeah which i find that hard to believe the it, game so has weird. a lot of content for a 20 dollar dlc yeah i mean okay so like straight up the story is not good right but it's, it's a two-hour it story. It's, short. it's okay. It's definitely not. It's not. It's not a fucking movie. It's not like Harry Potter calibers of story writing here. But it's a two-hour story. Is. God. It's, yeah. Same. And I think there's a lot of <laughs> PVE people in the community that are still expecting like a DLC for twenty dollars to be like nine missions, extensive lore, three strikes, two Bro, raids. The Taken the Taken no. King was thirty five dollar DLC. That's what everybody wants is Taken King. It's like, bro, that was almost a forty dollar DLC. It's almost a full new game. Yeah, Taken King was a complete like redo. It was like it was a complete new the style of Destiny. Yeah. Hey, yeah Harry that's Paul, not man. even a fair comparison. And I think that like it's so surprising to see people who are saying like you you should not log on to play Warmind. That yeah, sentiment right there is is stupid, right? Because one you know, you're telling people, you know, you have an impressionable audience that will listen to what you're saying, and maybe they could have a different experience than you. And you're especially when saying, you already bought the season pass. Like, yeah. if you bought the season pass, play the DLC. If you don't like it, then you don't like it. I think, unfortunately, that people do take like YouTubers' words a little bit too to heart. Like, I watch reviews and take it with a grain of salt, and then want to try something myself, right? I don't think enough people do that. And then you see a lot of people who just piggyback these negative opinions all over the place. And it's, it's just Some weird. people have such negative opinions on YouTube too. And so like when they influence so many people and so many other people just roll into this big negative snowball that grows and grows and it's ridiculous. It gets views, right? 
Like yeah. it gets views straight up. Like yeah. if you make a, I mean, if people, I make a drama attracts people. hundred percent. Like if our Dusty two review was this is the end for Bungie in the thumbnail, clickbait, capital letters, you know, arrows and circles in the thumbnail. Or something. Yeah, like that would have gotten <laughs> way more views than it did. But because we were like, hey, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. You know, yeah. suddenly people aren't as interested because apparently it's not trash. It's weird. It's really weird. Yeah, the Destiny Q community is so split on everything anyways. It's just like such a hard to please them. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can understand some of the PvE community's issues because there are still some things in PvE that are kind of whack. But, I mean, if you're, if you're a Crucible player, you play the game for PvP, I'm not really sure how you can't be enjoying the shit out of this update because I found the Crucible to be acceptable before this. It was okay, but it was definitely not always fun. I'm having fun just playing away right now, and I'm even enjoying, like, even sweaty Destiny, like, serious try-hard Destiny is actually kind of fun now. So, like, I don't understand how, like, the Crucible people especially aren't down with this. I love yeah. it. Even sweaty destiny. Yeah, yeah. Sweat, sweat, man. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Jack. Yeah. I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see. Uh, one thing that did come out of this, we're already going to be getting another major update in the next 10 days for Destiny, and it's going to have some bug fixes, some balance changes. Exotic armor is getting reworked. And then they're also going to be adding a, a Crucible test server, what they're calling Crucible Labs. And holy shit, if me and Jesse just aren't the best at predicting this shit out of nowhere, I mean, we already <laughs> called a bunch of shit in our Curse of Osiris review, which you should go check out, but <laughs> Warmind had a bunch of shit that we called, and then in our Warmind review, we said one of the last things they need to add is some kind of test server for balance changes, and what do you know? Here we go, end of the month, balance server. Bungie's just little, fucking hire us at this point, huh, Jess? Little Absolutely. Do, They're clearly watching the videos. Yeah, they 100%. watch them all. They watch uh, them all. I see you, Deej. Praise Deej. He's watching right now. Shout out. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think that the test servers will be a massive step forward because if there's one thing that Bungie still doesn't do correctly with their patches is there's always a lot of bugs or, like, very obvious balance issues. And being able to do stuff like test a TTK being lowered or test changes to certain weapons, it's nothing but a good thing. I don't see how that could ever be a problem for any game, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, so we're going to shift away from gaming for a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about movies, because uh, pretty much right after I uploaded the first episode of the podcast, it came out that uh, Sherlock Holmes 3 with Robert Downey Jr., it's oh. going to be coming in 2020, I think it was. Um, that's fucking exciting. I actually thought the two Sherlock Holmes movies that RDJ did were kind of underrated. I really enjoyed both of them quite a bit. I'm excited to see that they're coming back for a third one. I know, I know. Jesse has has thoughts on this because <laughs> oh, absolutely. Come on, Jesse, I have thoughts on this. yes, I have thoughts on this. I'm very excited. Um, to be honest, you know what's kind of funny is this is kind of spoilers for the second Avengers or Avengers Infinity War Part Two that's unnamed right now. Because the oh, only man. reason that Sherlock Holmes Three was not done is because Robert Downey Jr. is too busy with Marvel. So, a spoiler: Robert Downey Jr. probably not making it out of the next. There Avengers we go. It's movie. confirmed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost guaranteed at that point. That's it. I'm just gonna now, clickbait the fuck out of the next video. Did <laughs> RDJ confirmed dead? Yeah, might as well be. <laughs> RDJ, RDJ and Jude Law are like such a good pair. Like I love them as Sherlock and Watson, and I just like RDJ is my preferred Sherlock. You know, versus Benedict Cumberbatch, like that's who I want to see as Sherlock Holmes. When I read the books right now, I picture RDJ. Yeah. Well, then not to mention that Sherlock was absolute flaming garbage. Agreed. Yeah. <sighs> not a huge fan. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, the only thing I'm really curious about here is where do they go in terms of what stories are they going to tell? Because you've already done. You know, the final problem. You've already done some more, like, lesser-known stories in, like, the first film. Like, uh, in terms of what they're going to draw from from the source material, I'm curious to see what path they take. Because there's a lot of interesting I say, stories. I say you yeah. take it back. I think you stay, take it back to study in Scarlet and go with the introduction, introduction of RDJ and Watson, yeah, like Sherlock and Watson. Yeah. yeah that'd okay. be cool. Well, I mean, I think so. They definitely have been, uh, like, they've taken these movies in 
they've taken the source material and haven't adhered to it perfectly. They've done some like unique stuff <clears throat> kind of in the vein of Sherlock, so I wonder if they might even try and adapt their own story that's like based off one as well. That could definitely well, be Well the first one the first one's not exactly based on a book. Like there's a couple of different threads. Right. But yeah, there is no some nods. Multiple. Yeah. Yeah, there is no quite there's no Sherlock story that involves that plot line. Now obviously the second one, Game of Shadows, is definitely the final problem. Well, it's kind of like yeah. the final problem in the first story after that combined in the one because they also bring in the yeah. sniper. It's just, yeah, it's and the sniper is a cool character. Okay, he's an incredible character. Uh, let me let me let me jump in here. I want to say um, I do enjoy the RDJ um, Sherlock movies, and um, but Cumberbatch is my Sherlock. Um, sorry, oh, don't no, I, start this. Debate. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> no, I, you're I, wrong. I, I I no, I like they're both very <laughs> interesting characters, but I really I like the the panache and the the like suaveness of RDJ's Sherlock over Cumberbatch's, but his yeah. his deductive reasoning, his mind and everything, I just I don't know. I like his a lot better. But off of that subject, this movie look is going to be like epic. I'm really excited. I can't wait to see like the trailers for it. I will do a reaction for it because I loved both the first two movies. The first one but more than the second one, but I, I, I personally like the first one more than the second one. I personally yeah. like the second one more, but I think it's just because I've read those books so many times. Yeah. That it just like that feels line. it's closer to the books than the first one is. Oh, okay. Dude, I swear to God, if Stephen Fry is not intimately involved in every single aspect of this movie, I'm going to boycott. I refuse. <laughs> Stephen Fry is like the, the big biggest thing. Sherlock Holmes fan, you know? Yeah. I think the big thing, and he's in the movies, um, sure. I think that the big thing is that uh, Jude Law and, and Robert Downey Jr. have such great chemistry that I'm just excited to see them on screen together again. Oh, yeah, yeah 100%. I, they, they are very good together. I love Jude Law as Watson. I mean, it's awesome. And, and for a while there, to be honest, I was getting tired of seeing Jude Law's ass in any damn thing because he was everywhere. Yeah, he was all he over. He was all over. over. <laughs> and he like, won every winning. Oscar like for like, a good run there. Yeah, he was he just won, winning everything. I, he w- left with like like four or five Oscars one night, and I was like, yeah. what in the hell is going on? He, I was, He's he was, dominating. And it was for like the, the like five Oscars for were for like five different films, and I'm like, dude, all in one year, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, you have a life? Like a trooper. <laughs> oh, best actress goes to oh, it's fucking Jude Law again. What the fuck? Oh, best picture. Oh, Jude Law, you're not a picture. Well, give him a damn order. Give anyways. it to him. He deserves it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, Jude Law is everywhere. <laughs> uh, last last thing last thing I uh, I remember seeing Jude Law in before the. Uh, the uh, the Sherlock movies is uh Repo Men. I haven't seen, I haven't that. seen that one, dude. They go and like when you have like a liver failure, they give you a prosthetic, like they give you like a replacement liver, but you have to make a payment plan. And when you don't make your payment, they come and break <laughs> down your door and they cut so you I open and take that shit back. Like organ donor mafia. Yeah, it's crazy, but it's like all government run, and the cops are the ones that come and t- cut your liver out and take it Ooh. with them because you didn't make your payment. God damn. And somebody one else. Of them. Yeah, Jude Law's one of them until like one of his internal organs fails, and he gets on the ticket, and he can't make his payment. Oh, shit. Oh, and they're <laughs> after him, and he's having to kill his friends, and all. it's crazy. Okay. Uh, I didn't think that this discussion would land on that, but, you know, this, <laughs> this just happens. Jude Law happens. It was interesting. Jude Law feels like one of those guys who's just like, even if he's not like a star, you just like you just end up seeing him randomly in a bunch of movies. He just kind of pops up like, oh hey, there's Jude Law. I don't know. He's he's just one of those guys who's just fucking everywhere. It's crazy. Okay, one of one of my favorite shows like of all time is How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Oh yeah, hundred percent classic. Okay, and in that show, they always see Maury Povich. They're all there's always Maury Povich, and in this one episode, they they see Maury Povich everywhere in town, all at the same time. <laughs> And, wow. and they're like, Maury Povich is fucking everywhere. And I'm like, that's how Jude Law is. My fucker just everywhere. He is everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn us right around. We're going to go back to gaming for a brief <laughs> second. Just want to throw this out there. Um, Sky Noon, which was a game I covered on the channel a couple weeks back, they are actually having uh, another beta coming up this week. It's going to be very interesting to get back into that. I thought that that game really surprised me by being so incredibly unique 
and like something I legitimately haven't seen ever from a multiplayer shooter. So I mean, I'm pretty excited to see how this game develops in the coming months and like these guys are so cool on Discord, they're chill, they talk with the community all the time and they were super helpful. And it's 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 going to be interesting to see what changes they have in this next beta phase. I know it was kind of game came out of nowhere 100% for me, but I'm excited to see it coming back already so soon. I've been really anxious to play it again. Yeah, I don't really have too much to add here. I'll, I'll definitely give the beta a try though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. If you want to get involved, they're not paying me to plug this, but hey, you know, guys, come on, I'll do, I'll do it for free. Just just let me know. Uh, you guys can go to their website, skynoon.com, and you can sign up, join their Discord, and they are passing out beta keys like nobody's fucking business. It's not an open beta, but I mean, if you hang out on their Discord long enough, you'll get a beta key. So I highly recommend you do it if you want to try out some new uh, FPS action in the next week. Just had to throw that out there. Crazy uh, cowboys with freaking guns yeah, that... <laughs> yeah dude anti-gravity cowboy smash brothers i mean who the hell wouldn't play that it's, it's pretty a, it's a hell of a awesome. tagline you know i wanted to throw something out here while we're talking about gaming again right, <laughs> um andrew i saw your uh reaction to the rage 2 game yes oh and yeah, that yeah. game was not on my radar i'd not heard about it at all but i saw a thumbnail and i was like yeah it looks interesting i'll give it a watch yeah that shit looks just like destiny it's like destiny <laughs> and titanfall 2 had a baby i'm That's so excited too. for that to it's come weird, out man. Like, have you seen the did you watch the reaction jack yeah yeah i've seen the rage 2 trailer uh bethesda it Bethesda was weird, man. They developed some. Uh, they developed, they developed a lot of different games. You know, you got Fallout, Skyrim, and then Rage One came out a long time ago and wasn't really that good. It was like yeah. the same kind of post-apocalyptic, but like way the fuck Mad Max out there kind of aesthetic. Yeah. So I mean, Rage Two is going to be interesting. I'm not really. Does I'm it not look like Destiny? Change. Oh There's yeah, it doesn't look, look to it. it. It doesn't. I mean, it like this. This has a totally different look. I played Rage One. Um, like you said, it's not very good. It, no, there's a lot of issues <laughs> a lot of issues with the gameplay I, but i mean in, in general this one when i like just the concept of it and how they're marketing it it was really cool and then when i finally got to like some cool gameplay action i was like holy shit this looks so dope they're and gonna it, release some gameplay at e3 i don't yeah. know if they have any multiplayer but i'd love for that to be a multiplayer game oh hell yeah especially if it was like oh my god they could even do almost mmo style in that fps kind of like feel because you yeah. can do all the different teams and all the different like just like tribes yeah no for sure it could it be really kinda, fun it kind of came out of left field though like rage 2 like i don't think anybody saw this as like bethesda's next announcement but everyone thought it was like okay we're going to get Skyrim for the 17th time on the Switch. Then they're probably going to release Fallout again for the 17 billionth time on the Switch. And then nobody Maybe. knew when the hell Bethesda would release another new game. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, they released Quake Champions like a year ago, and that yeah, was kind of a true. failure for the most part. I know the majority of the Quake community is back on Quake Live. Guys, when when is the next Elder Scroll game coming out? Whenever they decide to stop releasing Skyrim Legendary Edition number 500. Oh my god! I, mean, I had like that was not the question. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what the hell Bethesda's obsession is with Skyrim. Skyrim's a cool game, but don't know, we don't but... need to be able to purchase it eighteen different times. But Elder they... Scrolls Six will be um, announced at E3, and there's 2018 rumors. Ooh, nice. So it's a possibility it comes out 2018, but more likely 2019. Okay, That's call it now. Game. It's going to be Skyrim DLC, hundred percent. But <laughs> well, oh, but they're also talking about Doom as well, man. Bethesda, you guys are on one. I would love. I heard Doom twenty eighteen is going to be um, a nice little step up from Doom tw- Doom twenty sixteen. I think it was twenty sixteen. Yeah. It might have been twenty fifteen. Uh, but I actually really like Doom, and I think Doom 20, 2018 might be really fun. Oh yeah, E yeah. three is going to be a blast. We'll have to do like a special E three. Oh, hundred percent. There's going to be That'd so be- much to talk about. Yeah. Word on the street is that the uh, the the start of year two, whenever like Taken King style expansion for Destiny Two is supposed to be announced year th- at E three, that's that's the word on the street. So that's going to be interesting as hell. Gonna have more Black Ops Four. Street. Yeah. yeah, more Black Ops Four. That's what I want. Hell and yeah. I've, I've been hearing this one flowing around. Apparently, Valve has been doing a lot of uh, a lot of stuff these last couple of months. They absorbed the developers of Firewatch, which is this really cool indie like walking simulator game that was really popular in like 2015. 
really cool you game. Say a walking simulator. Well, it's like one of those games where you just like you interact with the environment. There's not did like a whole lot of actual say the words. That's an actual genre. Simulator. He did. That's a genre. He, he, he okay, said that's walking... a thing that I have not heard of before. Okay, so it's like yeah. it's like a it's like a game like the, the Vanishing of Ethan Carter, where you just like walk around and you you know, sometimes like puzzle solving. Okay, well, it, when you said walking, I was like, maybe it's like a goat game. You know, no. the game where you just play the goats. <laughs> it's basically you play the goats. <laughs> you talking about Goat Simulator? Yes. Yeah, Goat Simulator. There you go. <laughs> oh, dude, that's, that's my... 22 of YouTube. What's up, dude? Goat Simulator, episode 390. We're going to throw dude, them off got, a cliff. They got a new <laughs> DLC at E3 or what? Oh, my God. No, no, okay, no so when like... you just said that, like, a walking simulator, I'm like, dude. That just sounds like as boring as fucking playing Goat Simulator. <laughs> okay. In hindsight, not the best way to describe it, but like Firewatch was a game where it th- those style of games that are pretty like much stories. Fire. It's like stories. It's pretty much story focused. There's no okay. there's not a whole lot of actual gameplay okay. in those types of games. Well, not you know what? Game. Here, I got this article up right here. Let me read it off to you guys because okay. E3's in, in June, and these are all the confirmed games that are going to be at E3. Uh huh. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, go ahead. All right, you got Rage 2, uh, Death Stranding, Beyond Good and Evil 2, Ghost of, Ghost of Tsushima, nice. Spider-Man, okay. uh, The Division 2. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm excited Fuck, for that. Yes. Super, Super Smash Bros. on the Switch. Yep. Uh, okay. Last of Us Part 2 with the new game trailer. Ooh, yes, <clears throat> please. Anthem. I'm actually very excited for Anthem. That does seem to be a Destiny uh, competitor as well. Battlefield 5. Um and Gears of War Five. Gears of War Five, nice. Interesting. Yeah, so there should be some really. We should do like a, a live, like some oh, live oh, yeah, yeah. reaction yeah, to I'm, all I'm the shit. That'd be oh, dope. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. If not, it's gonna be a big ass podcast after E three for damn sure. There's gonna be a lot to talk about. Yeah, right but now. that's a lot. That's like a good lineup. Last year's lineup was kind of weak. Yo, well, what and time, not what to mention is it stream. It's in What's June. That? It's like it's in June, June, isn't it? I know, but what time of the day? Oh, uh, it's an all-day thing, right? Isn't it like two days? Yeah, it's like usually like oh. eight to eight to five, something like that. Oh shit! Yeah, so it, goes, it literally goes. Like I mean, all the trailers will be up on YouTube like as they come out, so we don't even have yep. to. We can just. I guess that's just semantics for us to work out. But um, not yeah. to mention those games that we we know we're going to see Red Dead Redemption Two. We know for oh, damn yeah. sure that's going to be there. Ooh, ooh, yeah, Red can't Dead wait. Redemption Two. There was I didn't play the game. first one, so. Oh, and I, I want to say it was called Witchfire. Hold on, let me double check the name of this game real quick. Witchfire. Yeah, I love the first Red Dead Redemption. I'm really excited to see more Rage 2 gameplay, to be honest. I know, like, I can't wait. I, I, I'm definitely going to do a reaction. That trailer got me out. so hyped. I was like, what is this game, and how come I've never heard of it before? I, dude, I know. Like, I was like, after seeing the trailer, I was like, holy shit, this is really gangster. I'm, like, super pumped for this. Yeah, that Scott. was a hype trailer. There was this game, and I, I really wish I could remember the name of it, because it really caught me when I saw its trailer at the last E3. I think it was the last E3. Um, the new Splinter Cell is also going to be at E3. New Splinter Cell does isn't, sound dope. But, um, hey, isn't the uh, new uh, Kingdom Hearts going to be there, too? Oh, yeah. I don't I see it on this list, but maybe it's just not on There was list. just a Nintendo event where I guess people finally got to play the new Kingdom Hearts. That like oh, just happened yeah. like two days ago. Oh, there's probably gameplay up somewhere on YouTube. I don't know if there was any capture allowed, but apparently people have had a chance at like some Nintendo event to play the new Kingdom Hearts. I want to fucking play it so bad. Kingdom Hearts, I'm gonna, no. guys. I'm I'm gonna disappear for like three days when that comes uh, out. No, no problem, no problem. <laughs> it's not a problem. Do you want to do hoping... some uh, quick announcements about making the podcast maybe bi-weekly? Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on. I want to talk about this since we were talking about um, trailers. There was this game that was announced at the Game Awards this year. It's called Witchfire. And I'm really excited to see more about this game because it's kind of got like this like Dark Souls, uh, nonsense of gameplay. It's got like this Dark Souls aesthetic to it. And it's first person and it's going to be like a PvE game. And hmm. probably one of the dopest trailers I have ever seen. Um, I mean, I'll oh, put man. it in the Discord for you guys to watch after this. But oh my god, the trailer for this game looked so good. I know it's going to be at E3. I'm really excited um, to see to see this because this is from the guys who made Bullet Hell 2, or yeah, I think Bullet Hell Bullet Storm 2, and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which game I just referenced a couple minutes ago. So nice little segue. And this game looks awesome. So looking forward to that. 
definitely check it out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we were talking about this before the show. We're kind of wanting to take this podcast in the direction of being uh, every two weeks we'll come through the new episode of Nerd Meltdown. Um, we're kind of flirting with the idea as well of taking it to a live format, live streaming over on our Twitch channel, which you guys should be following. If you're not, uh, please do so. And if you guys <laughs> would like to see this live where you guys can interact with us, maybe we even uh, we'll, uh, you know, bring you into the Discord, you know, maybe get some questions from the community. Oh, the live call down below. Yeah, dude, live calling. You know, long time viewer, first time caller. What's good? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I've also toyed around with the idea of throwing these up on SoundCloud, um, so you. might look out for that in the future as well. Got to awesome. be careful though. Next thing you know, Nerds and Rise mixtape. That's a fucking dangerous oh, road. It's on fire. <laughs> Yeah, I just think uh, making it bi-weekly is a good idea, and then also we can try to make these a little bit more organized so we're not rambling so much <laughs> off of these. Yeah, but I like the organic flow, you know? It yeah, does it, feel organic, I agree. It feels like we're drunk. Whole Foods, organic flow. Yeah. Whole Foods, organic flow. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the fucking lead single on the mixtape, 100% Whole Foods. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, All so right, you got you guys... anything else, Jack? Yeah, so if you guys want to see the podcast every two weeks, or if you want to see us move to any different formats, let us know in the comments down below. We're definitely looking to make this, you know, something that you guys want to watch and listen to. We're willing to push it to more platforms. We're willing to push to different, like, live stream formats as well. And, you know, it is it is up to you guys what this podcast becomes, because at the end of the day, we're just here to just ramble on about bullshit for, uh, for you know, 50 minutes to an hour. Whatever that form takes is up to you guys. I mean, I got nothing else to add on that. Yeah, I agree. I think you put it well. Yeah. All right, that guys, I think we're gonna go ahead and call it here. If you guys like the podcast, make sure you hit that like button. Just, just destroy it. Just absolutely, just implode it. You can also subscribe for more. You can check out some of our recent videos. I got a plug that I recently did my first Rainbow Six Siege video on this channel. And I was really bummed that the Rainbow Six Reddit uh, basically snuffed me. So I don't think it reached as many people as I thought it would. So Snuff. I really enjoyed that video. If you want to take a look, it will be linked in the end card. Also, uh, we had some... You know what we forgot to talk about was Charmed. But I guess we'll just push Charmed into the next podcast. Yeah. But uh, Andrew's Charmed reaction went pretty big. Got a lot of views. If you want to take a look at that, that will also be in the end card. Other than that, you can check for our social media in the description. And, you know, my name is Jack. Thank you guys for watching. That's Jesse. That's Andrew. This has been episode two of Nerd Meltdown. We will see you guys in the next video. Later. Later.